Computer science within HPC know that scaling applications is extremely crucial for advancing science. And the reason why is because computers are becoming more parallel. Within a single node, there are more cores. And with GPUs, there are hundreds of cores. And across nodes, there are more and more cores. But the problem lies in that scaling an application is not easy. And this is shown in, in the IDC survey done recently. And what they found is that majority of applications run on a single node, and that's it. While 16% of HPC applications run on a single core, and only 1% run on thousands of cores today. What that shows is scaling is not an easy thing to do on CPU-only based clusters. What developers are faced with in HPC is now they have an option with GPUs. And if they're going to spend the time to, to scale the application, what they're choosing is to use GPUs because the performance benefit is much higher. The ROI is greater. The amount of spend is, is going to be the same, but the performance will be better. And so the question is, will applications on GPUs scale to hundreds or thousands of GPUs? And the answer is yes. And in fact, there is a supercomputer at Tokyo Tech, the cluster being Subami 2.0, that have, in fact, over 10 applications that are scaling over thousands of GPUs. Amazing science is happening today, and we're going to go through a few of these applications. The first application that I want to talk about is a really interesting application. In fact, they won the Gordon Bell Prize for supercomputing 2011, which is like the Nobel Prize for, for supercomputing. And what they're able to do is innovate on a lighter and stronger metal for applications like more fuel efficient cars. And you can imagine that manufacturing more fuel efficient cars is extremely important. What they were able to achieve with this application is two petaflops of application performance on over 4,000 GPUs with great scaling. And what they're hearing is that their customers are really excited about the innovation that's happening on this application today. Another area of research that's extremely important is weather forecasting. Weather modeling is, is extremely computationally intensive. It involves sophisticated computation, uh, includes fluid dynamics and physical processes to, to describe cloud and rain and snow. And, and for Japan, this is important because they're surrounded by water, and they want to simulate things like typhoon and, and tsunamis. What Japan Meteorological Agency, or JMA, is using today is, is uh, using five kilometers of resolution to disseminate weather forecast. Where they want to get to is 500 meters of resolution. And what Tokyo Tech is able to do is actually get there today using GPUs. They were able to achieve about 145 teraflops of performance using nearly 4,000 GPUs, which is actually uh, a world record for weather modeling. And they were actually able to achieve 500 meters of, of, of resolution. And as you can see on the slide, the, the weather forecasting on the bottom is so much better, so much more accurate than it is on top. Another area of research is genomics and looking at things like pollutants in their natural environment. This is really important for Japan as, as they think about what kind of uh, natural things are happening in their system and, and are there environmental pollutants or even, even unnatural pollutants that they need to look at. And, and the existing software for genomics is uh, not sufficient. What scientists use today is called Blastax. And what uh, the researchers in Japan were able to, to put together is an application called GoStem, which is comparable to Blastax, but achieved 3x performance using uh, GPUs. And in fact, they were able to, to achieve two times better performance than uh, 16,000 cores using 2,000 GPU. The last application that I'd like to talk about is, is something that hits home for everyone, which is really forecasting heart attacks. And this is something that no one has, a, has been able to do because it's really, really difficult to do. And the reason why is because each patient is different. Their artery geometry is different, and the blood flow may be different. And what the Japanese researchers are able to do is, is put together an application that gives a forecast specific to each patient based on their geometry of, of the arteries. And they were able to do this on petascale performance using 4,000 GPUs. The exciting thing about this is that 
they're able to look at each patient and tell them, hey, this is where we think that your risks are going forward and uh, is innovating, really, the future of medicine. There are other applications that are scaling very well today on GPUs, and, and um, I wish I had more slides to list them, but I'm going to end with this one slide. A lot of these applications are, are household names like NAMD and LAPS and um, are able to scale very well. And, and I list some of the achievements that we've seen based on the cluster runs that we, we've had today. Uh, some of the highlights uh, from China, for example, they're able to, to run on 7,000 GPUs uh, to do molecular dynamics to, to innovate on solar panels, for example. Or another application from, Jap from China is to simulate a whole H1N1 virus using nearly 2,000 GPUs. So the, the no really is, is that science is happening on GPs today and it's scaling extremely well. And we're excited to see more and more applications scale to th these kind of levels to advance science going forward.